Hey guys, okay, so this is a, uh, that final piece in lab three, which is asking um, for how much land cover or what's the proportion or fraction of each of the different NLCD land cover classes that the Pumas as a whole are spending their time on. Um, so if the question is related to the Pumas as a whole, um, the first thing that you can think about is rather than doing this analysis that we're going to cover in a second, rather than doing it for each of the 30 odd <laughs> lion files that you have in there, instead, if you just do it a single time, that is way more efficient, saves you a lot of time. Um, and since we don't care about what's going on with the individual lions, um, putting them all together makes sense. So just a couple of things that I was just making sure work in here to allow for the merge tool, which is what we're going to do in a second to put them all together, allow the merge to work um, a little bit easier is um, first, when you find your database, if you open your databases in catalog, that will always go to the project geo database associated with this project that you've saved. Um, wherever that happens to be located, it'll just show you in this case the the default project for this one you can add additional so right click and add new file geo databases that are sort of like within or appended to um, this database file so that's what i did i added a new geo database that i just called puma points um, because I just wanted a folder, essentially, in this case, a geodatabase folder, but fine, a folder where all of my points would be in a single place. And then when I did the X, Y to table, um, you can see that the output is going into that, you could see it a second ago, Puma underscore points geodatabase, rather than going into the My Project geodatabase, right? So, you know, that's just the output feature class. I navigated to um, the Puma points was available within that and then just did the, you know, name, percent, name, percent points was the output file type. So I already ran all of that and that gave me all of these which are inside of this new geo database. So here's the reason why that's useful um, because when I do the merge to put all of those however many <laughs> points there are together, I can just go and find, and I already did this, so it would navigate it right there. I can find my Puma points geo database and then just do a shift select all um, to put all of those input data data sets in there. It's just a little bit easier rather than having everything in together. So if you get like points and lines and polygons and split lines and you know multi points and whatever else having to like click through X number of times <laughs> to find all of those is a little annoying and I like saving time. So um, down here at the bottom, we can see what fields are already existing in the point shape file. So we've got the name of the lion, which is nice if we ever needed to back out specific lion points. We've got that, a date, a time, a latitude, and a longitude are present in all 37 is the total number of lions. So 37 files um, have all five of those attributes. My output file, I'm going to save this also to Puma points, um, but I could save it wherever I wanted to save it. Actually, maybe I won't. I'll put it in my project. So this is all the Pumas. Um, and then, so essentially what's that do, what that's doing is taking 37 individual files, which have the exact same attribute fields and it is smashing them all together into a single file that contains everything. So the nice thing about having a single file that contains everything is that any process that we do to that, um, we only have to do one time, right? So like if I wanted to count up the number of points, for example, um, associated with each line, then I could just do a single summarize on this final file um, using the case field of lion, right, to tell me what the total count is for each of those animals. Um, and then two thirds of the way there, almost there. In this case though, the last question in the lab is about land cover. 
And the land cover that you have is a rastered grid of the National Land Cover Database. You already know if you had a polygon land cover, you would know using either an intersect or a spatial join how to get information about a polygon land cover into a point. But we haven't necessarily talked about how to get information about uh, raster gridded data into a point. So here's my 37 lines together, um, just for fun. Let's do the symbology. Uh, what do I want? No, based on. Mm, which one is it? I can, there it is. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do the unique values based on the lion and stick all of the different colors in there. Oh, still unique values. Why isn't that working? Right, because I have to add all of the values. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was a little uh, remembering how to do this thing. So just to remind ourselves that there's 37 different lines in here, it's more than we needed to do. Um, okay, so in our lab three data, we should also have this, uh, uh, no, not there, the NLCD, TIFF, right? The geo TIFF. Let me close this so we don't have to look at all of those. So we can bring that over. And I just wanted to take a look at this to remind ourselves of what this is under topographic. Let's go. Okay, a beautiful color scheme that GIS is choosing for this particular default. Um, but you remember that each of these numbers is actually a categorical number that is associated with a particular land cover class. And that information is in the lab. Let's see if I still have it open. Lab three assignment, here it is. So this is just copied out of the metadata, which you also have that XML file. Um, but, you know, for example, category 11 refers to a land cover class of open water. So our question is, for each of these 131,840 total locations where a puma resided at one point in 15 minute or thereabout increments, um, what kind of land cover was it standing on, sitting on, lying down on, whatever it was doing, jumping rope on? Um, that's what we're going to find out based on these points. And the tool that you need to use for this is called extract multi values to points. So this is a pretty simple tool. We have points that go in and from it, we're pulling raster data. The reason that I like the extract multi values to points tool, there's also an extract values to points tool, but the extract multi values to points allows you to specify the name of the field that we're going to append to this thing. I'm going to close this just in case it doesn't like it. Um, and so as I run that, basically what it's doing is for each point, it is looking at what the pixel value is, right? 0, 11, 21, 22, et cetera, um, for the underlying raster grid. And then it is pulling that value into this new field called NLCD the National Land Cover Database, underscore 2016. And it is almost done, maybe. OK, good. So now everything should look exactly the same, right? Like nobody changed location or anything like that. All that's the same. The main thing that should be different is that when we look at our attribute table, we have this NLCD field column appended to this. So. Now, if I want to know for these 131,840 points, where, you know, what percentage of time was spent on land cover 52 versus any other 90, 42, whatever else, that is back to something that you guys should be really familiar with now, the summarize tool, right? Because all we want is a count, 
associated with each of these different categorical land cover types. The case field when I start there is by default going to go um, as NLCD 2016. The field doesn't matter because all we want is the frequency or the count. So I can pick whatever I want in here. I'm just going to make it count so that it's um, easy to remember. And then when this output table, and I didn't, I just went with a default table name. You might want to actually name your table so that it's something that you can recover later. Um, now, when I look at this final thing, frequency count, those are going to be the same. Here are all of my different land cover classes, and I can sort this by frequency. And this tells me that 105,016 points out of, remember, my 131,840. So most, you know, 75% or something like that of the time the animals were on land cover 52 and land cover 52, if we look it up, is this shrub scrub, um, which makes sense because we're in Southern California. There's lots of shrub scrub going on down in uh, the, you know, Los Angeles area. So, uh, this number divided by this number gives you the percent of multiplied by 100 gives you the percent of time um, that all of these different animals are spending on land cover 52. Um, and this divided by that gives you the amount of time on land cover 42 and so on down the line. So hopefully that is enough. Um, to get you through that final piece on the lab of asking for all of the animals combined, you know, like how much time are they spending on the different land cover classes. Thanks, I'll see you in class next week.